Good afternoon, morning, whatever time of day you are logging into the video. We are continuing with lesson 19, describing comparisons. And today is day three. So let's review. Our standard is from reading informational standard eight, Describe how sentences in a text are connected by comparisons. Describe how paragraphs in a text are connected by comparisons. So we are going to look at our learning target, which is I can describe the connections between ideas in a text that will help me understand what the author is explaining. Some of the key vocabulary words that we will need is connections and comparison. Let's remember that when we're comparing something, we are seeing how it is similar or alike or different. Okay. So scholars, let's look review, and review our form term of connections, how sentences and paragraphs are connected and why the connections are important. Comparing means showing how two or more things are alike and different. Our additional signal words are however, but, different, or unlike. Be sure to jot down these signal words to help you when you're framing your responses. Now, let's dive into The Great Inca Road by Hilary Dumitru. So, it's important that we first look and get an idea of the types of questions we'll have to be able to answer by the end of this text. How many miles made up the entire Incan road system? So as we read today, when you figure out how long the Incan road system is, we're going to pause and make sure we jot that down. How did the king of the Incan empire communicate with his people? And what is the article mostly about? So I will begin reading. Paragraph one. Roads are difficult to build and expensive to take care of. However, a great civilization needs great roads. Roads connect people to the goods they need to live. They allow the government to send help where it is needed. Even the most ancient civilizations understood the need for good roads. High in the Andes Mountains, the Incan Empire, so I'll pause here, so I know that the location of where the Incans lived is in the Andes Mountains, thrived for hundreds of years. When Spanish explorers arrived in the 16th century, they were amazed by the roads that they found. Even the longest Roman road, the Via Appia, was not as long as the Inca's Royal Way. The Incan road was 3,500 miles long. Excellent. So we know the Incan road was 3,500 miles long. Like the Via Appia, the Royal Way connected the capital to all other parts of the empire. More roads connected to it. All in all, the Inca road stretched for 23,000 miles. So for the entire system, it was 23,000 miles long. Unlike the Romans, the Incas did not have wheels or carts. Instead, they rode yacht llamas. These dirty animals carry people and goods all over the empire. Messengers known as Shaqui ran along the Inca road. They carry messages from the king to all of his people. So when we go to this question, how did the king of the Incan empire communicate with his people? We see here in paragraph three towards the end that messengers known as Shaquis ran along the Inca road and those are the ones that carried his people. So if you put 23,000 miles, you're absolutely correct. He used messengers known as Shaqui to carry messages along the road to different parts of the empire. Now, what is this article mostly about? Hmm. So I know that in every paragraph, they talk about the importance of roads to the civilization and it gives different details. I'll give you a second to think. What is this article mostly about? Okay, 
So let's see if your thoughts and my thoughts match up. The article is mostly about the amazing roads and bridges built by the Incas and how the roads and bridges were used. Excellent, let's keep going. Paragraph four. The Inca road passed through high mountains. To safely cross the deep mountain ravines, the Incas built amazing hanging bridges. These bridges were not made out of steel like modern bridges. Instead, they were woven out of plant fibers. But the Spanish found that the bridges were strong enough to carry soldiers and horses safely. So, good readers, we always like to go back and analyze our text. How does the author use comparisons to help you understand the topic? How does the author compare the bridges in the Incan Empire to the bridges in the Roman Empire? Let's go back to look. So as you see in paragraph two, the author talks about the differences in the Roman Empire compared to the Inca Empire. I'll give you that time to underline the two civilizations whose roads are compared in paragraph two. Excellent, so you should have underlined the Incan Empire and the Roman Empire. So, what you're going to do now is you are going to go into your think time. The first question asks you, the roads of different groups of people are compared in this passage. Which groups are they? So are they the Spanish and the Incas? The Spanish and the Romans? the Incas and the Romans, or the Incas, the Spanish, and the Romans. Excellent. Okay, if you pick the Incas and the Romans, ding, 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 woohoo! great job. So this is a great example of a question where Tricky Ricky likes to come out and play. The author does mention the Spanish government often, but that is only in the sense of the Spanish explorers. They never talk about the actual Spanish roads of the Spanish empire. They do, however, especially in paragraph two, talk about the Roman roads and the Incan roads. It's very important as you read that you stop to make sure you, one, understand what the question is asking you, and two, that you have specific text evidence to support your answer. Great job. Another way to spot comparisons is to look for the same details about two different subjects. All right, now, I want you to look to number two. Which two sentences from the passage compare and contrast two important rows? Now, you're gonna put on your text detective hat to figure out which two compare and contrast two important rows. So let's go through the answer choices. A strategy that good readers do is that we go through each answer choice to make sure that it has all the parts that the question's asking us. So it has to talk about two different roads. So choice A, even the most ancient civilizations understood the need for good roads. Does that talk about the two roads? <clears throat> so that can't be it. B, when Spanish explorers arrived in the 16th century, they were amazed by the roads they found. Does that talk about two different roads? Nope, eh, B is not it. C, even the longest Roman road, the Via Appia, was not as long as the Inca's Royal Way. Interesting. Does that compare and contrast the two important roads? We have the Roman road, Via Appia, and we have the Inca's Road, Royal Way. I'm gonna put a dot by that, and I'm gonna, Imagine I have my little pencil here. I'll put a little dot by that. Here we go. There we go. That's a possibility. All right, let's keep reading. D, like the Via Appia, the Royal Way connected the capital to the other parts of the empire. 
Is that comparing and showing how they have a similarity? Yes, it is. So we can put a little dot there too. Um, let, but we still always read all the choices. We never just stop, even if we think we found both answers. E, the bridges were not made out of steel like modern bridges. No, and that's not it. And F, the, unlike the Romans, the Incas did not have wheels or carts. No, that talks about the civilization, but not about the actual road itself. And then G, the Spanish found that the bridges were not strong enough to carry soldiers or horses safely. Hmm. Yep, and yes, excellent. All right, so we have reached the end of our time together today. <sighs> but it is exciting because now you get to show what you know. So you should see this in your packet. However, I will read this to you. So you're going to write a short response in your exit ticket online. Your response is, paragraph four compares two types of bridge. How does the comparison help you understand why Incan bridges were so amazing? So here's a hint. Don't just look at the signal words. Look for sentences that show how the bridges are the same or different. You will find the exit ticket in the description box for this video. It's very important that you actually complete your exit ticket online because this is the way that your reading teachers are able to figure out who needs help and if you're able to understand the paragraph. So please be sure to click on the exit ticket in the box. We are so excited to see what you write. Also, please note that you are supposed to be pulling from paragraph four. From what paragraph? Great job, four. All right. That's all, folks. I'll talk to you tomorrow.